Hello, this video is about type 1 and type 2 errors. Before we start, I want to be very clear that hypothesis testing um, follows the scientific method. We are not trying to prove anything. We're simply trying to disprove something. And if we fail to disprove it, then we support it. And it is a backwards way of thinking, and we use a lot of double negatives, and all of these words are very new, and the process and way of thinking can be very different. So you might want to watch these videos a couple times and make sure that you're very clear on the language um, and then work through the problems using this process. All right, so we do a hypothesis test and we get a decision and we either reject the null hypothesis or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. But what if we're wrong? So we're only 95% confident most of the time. You could be 99%, but that's allowing for 5% error. So what if we're wrong? <laughs> Here's how this works. We have two types of errors. Guess what? There's more than two, but we're just going to focus on these two. If we reject the null hypothesis, so if we reject the null, then we are saying that we found a difference between two groups, male and female. If in reality, so in the population, in real life, that is true, there really are no differences. We made a type 1 error. So we said that there is a difference. In reality, there is no difference between male and female. That is a type 1 error. If we reject the null hypothesis, so we said that there is a difference when in reality, in the population, the null is false, meaning there really are differences. So we said there's differences, there really are differences. Woohoo! We did good. We made a correct decision. If we fail to reject the null, so here we are saying that there are no differences between the groups. So if we fail to reject the null, then we are supporting that there is no difference. In reality, if that is false, so there really are differences in the population, we just couldn't find them, that's a type 2 error. And of course, if we say there's no difference, and in reality there is no difference, then woohoo, we made a good decision again. So, type 1 and type 2 error has to do with what decision did you make, and in reality what is true. So if we say there is no difference, I'm sorry, if we say that there is a difference between male and female, when in reality there's not a difference, that's a type 1 error. If we say there is no difference between the two groups, and in reality there is a difference, we just couldn't find it, that's a type 2 error. So let's look at how this works. So if we are deciding if we are going to let someone into graduate school on the basis of a GRE score, so they found a relationship between success in grad school and being and scoring high on a GRE. So if you are successful in grad school, then you probably had a high GRE. So the school has decided that if you get a low GRE score, then they're not going to let you in. Here's how this error works. If you take the GRE, which is a really awful test, and you get a low score, if you went to grad school and you were unsuccessful, then that would be true. This statement would be true. So low GRE and you're unsuccessful, that follows the pattern that we would expect. You didn't do well on the test, and you didn't do well in grad school. So that was the correct decision to not let you in. If you have a low GRE score and you actually did well in grad school, then that would be a type 1 error. You'd be kind of the exception to the rule. So you were successful in grad school even though you had this low GRE score. Unfortunately, um, they didn't let you in, so you didn't even get to try. So a type 1 error is worse, in my opinion, because we're making decisions based on it and you didn't even get to try. So let's look at below. If I'm successful in grad school and I had a high GRE, 
then that was also a correct decision. You should have let me in. I had a high GRE school and I was successful. But it's also possible that I have a high GRE score and I'm unsuccessful in grad school. That would be a type two error. And that's still unfortunate, but I at least got to try to be in grad school. So type two error is also not a good thing, but we tend to at least not make huge decisions um, and change things based on type two errors. So let's go back to our examples from the last video. If we are comparing customer satisfaction on samples of Colorado and California, if we found a difference between Colorado and California, so we reject the null hypothesis, we say there is a difference, then we might have made a type one error. If on the other hand, we do not find a difference between Colorado and California, so we fail to reject the null, then I might have made a type two error. So think about this one, press pause and think about what would be the type one and type two error. So in this case, we are looking at NBA players compared to all other women in the US. If I reject the null hypothesis and I say that women NBA players are taller than women on average, then I might have made a type one error. If on the other hand, I do not find a difference between NBA players and everyone else, which would be kind of weird, then I might have made a type two error. And the weird part is that these errors, we probably are never gonna know if we made it or not. So we wanna keep the study, we wanna do everything we can to avoid these, but if we reject the null and we say there's a difference, I might have made a type one error, but I probably won't know this until someone tries to replicate my study or I try to get re replicate my study or I get more data and I do the test again and again and again, I may not ever know. And again, if I reject the null hypothesis, then I might have made a type two error. So keep these in mind and we're gonna be talking about them throughout the hypothesis testing problems. Take a moment, check your understanding, make sure that you get the concept of hypothesis testing and of course the difference between